Hello and welcome back to the My Tehillim Time Omer edition. We are in day five and uh, I'm so excited to have you here. It's great to see you on there, Cheryl. You just saw yourself up on the screen. I want to thank you incredible women for being here uh, day in and day out. Uh, it's, it's really been a pleasure. I'm very excited to introduce our speaker for today. But before that, just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, today, we're still in the week, currently in the week of Tiferet, uh, which is really focused on a world of harmony. But above all, it's a world of balance where we can balance the incredible energy of Chesed with the structured energy of Givura, you know, the combination of Avraham, who represents Chesed, and of Yitzchak, whose representation of Givura, of strength. It comes to a perfect uh, meeting point within Yaakov, who represents truth. And, and why truth? Because, you know, for truth to exist, there actually has to be balance. And it's for this exact reason that we are all called B'nai Yisrael, the children of Yisrael, which is the second name for Yaakov. Our goal, in a sense, is to find that perfect, truthful balance. But when we look, at, of course, at Yaakov's life, we see that Yaakov had a lifelong struggle to actually obtain balance amidst all of the complexities of his life. And it's not because it was easy for him, but precisely because it was something difficult for him, something that he had to grapple with, but he never stopped his pursuit for it. So this is just some things to keep in mind as we're going to be hearing from our incredible speaker, Jordana, today, as we're going to be speaking. We're in the week of, like I said, the week of Tiferet. Before I introduce Jordana, just a couple of more announcements. First off, for those of you that are new here, welcome. My name is Orly Waba. I'm the founder of Abraham's Legacy. It's an app for Tehillim that allows us to collectively complete the book in unison, in real time with people from all over the world in all different languages. And it's come to become so much more. It's, it's a community of like-minded people that truly believe in the power, not only of tefillah, but the power of connection, what that does, what it has the ability to do. I created this app in memory. My grandfather, Allah Shalom Avraham Ben Polin, if this is your first time at one of our events, I'm so happy that you're here, but just know you'll have the ability to look back at other recordings by going to our YouTube channel. You'll see recordings from all the past events. They're there in the emails that are sent to you as well, and you can subscribe to our channel. One other thing I want to mention to you is, and all of these notes are going to be in the Zoom, so not to worry. We also have something called podcast, a, a podcast in, called Mitzvah in the Spotlight where we have various videos on there, whether it be to do with Abraham's legacy or with Natila, or, uh, you know, I do daily messages Monday through Thursday from my book called Kindness Boomerang. It's a lesson a day book in kindness for every day of the year. There's an act of kindness, and a quote, and then a short, you know, form a uh, story on the power of paying it forward, the power of kindness. All of these can be found in the mitzvah in the spotlight uh, that is there for you to check out uh, as you like. I want to encourage all of you to also download the Abraham's Legacy app that you just saw a little bit about. If you have a smartphone, please do so. If you don't, just know I am thinking of you. I am working hard to get this app also available on just websites, whether you have a smartphone or not. But at the end of the program today, after we hear from our very, very inspiring speaker, who I really admire her tremendously, we're going to be engaging in a Tehillim read together for a six-minute period. And Bezrat Hashem, if we all join in, we have the power to finish one book of Tehillim. So grab your phone, download the app if you don't have it already so that you could join in with us. And just one last announcement. We do have a raffle that's going on that you can be a part of when you make a minimum donation of $18 to Abraham's Legacy. Uh, you can also dedicate a chapter of Tehillim for the week or for the month. And you'll also be automatically included in this raffle. Plus, your loved one's name will be listed on a chapter, whether it be for the week or whether it be for the month. Uh, raffle prizes include a copy of Ruben Ibrahimov's book, uh, From Your Lips to God's Ears, a 100% pure copper Natila cup, courtesy of Natila, as well as a tour in Yerushalayim in the footsteps of David Melech, a list of incredible books by our speakers. We have a, vid a short video for you that we'll show at our next event. And it'll be on our website so you can see exactly what those prizes are uh, and more. So check that out. All the links are there for you uh, so you could see them. The full schedule of the program is right on our website, abrahamslegacy.com forward slash sign up. In case you got here from a friend of yours, you'll receive our email reminders so that you know exactly what's coming when. 
I want to just mention, because this is a question that came through, you do not need to register for every event. So very easy. It's the same Zoom link for every event. So if you registered once, no need to register again, because some people were asking and, and re-registering. You'll be on the list and you will get all of the emails that are being sent your way from the email address info at abrahamslegacy.com. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can also always email me directly there. Now on to our main attraction. And I just want to, I want to thank, put a couple of thank yous out there. I want to thank Naomi for organizing this and helping me to bring this into life. I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank our incredible speaker, Jordana, who I'm going to introduce in just a moment. And of course, thank Hashem for allowing me to be able to do this. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we're tonight's speaker is Jordana Barakov, or she's better known as Drink It In underscore Jordana. She's a middle school dean by morning, associate, associate director of mentorship for Olami by afternoon, and a Torah influencer and podcaster by night. Yeah, she's very, very busy. So Jordana inspires thousands with her positive outlook and everyday life lessons through a Torah lens with her Drink It In videos, Drink It In podcast, or simply her fun carpool reels. So check it out. You can check her out at Drink, in, drink It In underscore Jordana or at jordanatorah.com or via her email, jbarakov at gmail.com. All these links will be in the actual Zoom and also on the replay as well. Jordana is going to be sharing with us on the topic of the source of true compassion and focusing on chapter 103 in Tehillim. So feel free to either grab your book of Tehillim or grab your phone so that you can open up to chapter 103 as we introduce Jordana. Jordana, it is a pleasure to have you here. Oh, tremendous pleasure for me. I can't believe it's so nice to see you again, Orly. One of these days we will definitely meet in person. Zrat Hashem. We're working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just also to be a part of something so special, it's not only just about the Tehillim app that you've created, which is unbelievable, but the list of speakers to be among those women that get to share such words of wisdom and inspiration. It is really a, a great honor. And thank you for including me in such an endeavor. I so appreciate it. You know, to give people a little bit of a, a background, you reach, they reach out to us. And okay, which park do you want, Jordana? What day do you want, Jordana? And so right away, there's one park that I really resonate with. And I put that down like, it's taken. Oh, well, that made sense that it was taken. So I was like, okay, so what park should I go with next? So my second choice was this park, park 103, Kuf Gimel. And there's a special place in my heart for this park. And I wanted to explain why this parak <clears throat> was so special to me and still is it's because I had a very dear friend. Her name was Nancy, Nancy Novak. She passed away four years ago, uh, unfortunately to cancer. And she battled with it for a little over 12 years. And one of the things she had told me one time was that she says parak 103 every day. That's what something she had done. She had read it in Hebrew. She had read it in English. She was told by her doctor, believe it or not, her doctor had told her, he was an observant man and said, say this chapter every day. And this is what's going to help you get through whatever you're going through. And so anytime we had any event for her or anytime we said we used to get together every Thursday night in the local synagogue and we would pray for her, we always started with Parak 103 because I had told them that she had shared with me that that's the one she says every day. And this one talks about compassion and it just so coincides with what today is for the Sfira. The Sfira today, well, at least for us still it is, in Eretz Yisrael it has switched. So, you know, go with me uh, where I'm located. It's Tiferet B'Tiferet. And this is something that Orly was so wonderfully saying. And I'm going to use another word, compassion. So it's compassion within compassion. And this parak of Tehillim gives us a little insight to one level of compassion. What I want to talk about first is the compassion that's easy for all of us. It's easy for us to have compassion for someone that we like, someone that we get along with. That's always easy for us to do. Someone maybe we love, we could give to so easily. That's an easy compassion. Then there's the type of compassion for someone that we find a little bit more challenging. 
You know, I once heard a, a great story of somebody who says, what's, what's compassion when I am going, driving my car and I pass by the bus stop. And when I pass by the bus stop, I see somebody and I want to give them a lift. As I get closer and closer and closer to that bus stop, I see it's somebody I don't get along with. Now, are you willing then to give them the lift in your car? You don't get along with them. You have issues with them. That's a form of compassion, trying to find compassion within yourself for people that you might not always get along with so easily. That's one form, having compassion for those that you find challenging to get along with. And then this is the most beautiful one, learning to have compassion for yourself. To ferret, bit to ferret, having compassion within compassion. And I've read something so beautiful from Khani Jervil. She has a safer. Just gonna put it over here. If anyone ever wants to read it, she goes day by day. It's a beautiful safer going through each day of the Sphira. And on today, for Tiferet Petiferet, she talks about Rav Shimshon Pincus. And Rav Shimshon Pincus had presented a beautiful thought. He had said, get ready for this. You know, there are times when we see these National Geographic films of um, the animal kingdom and how an animal is born. And like within seconds, all of a sudden that animal is like walking and, and living all on their own. And he said, he, we as humans, the highest form of creation, as soon as a human is born, they're like a couch potato. They just, ah, a baby's just there. And, and, and the baby needs the caretaker, the mom, the father to, to take care of them until a little bit later on, only for months later, or could be even years, we as individuals, we learn how to be independent. And it's so odd because we're the highest form of creation. So how is it with the animals and not with us? So Rapinka says something so beautiful. He said, this is a powerful lesson for us to teach us that God loves us for just being. We're called human beings, not human doers. That God isn't loving us for what I do, but God loves me for who I am, for just being in existence. When I wake up in the morning, I've awoken up. He loves us just for being. That's why we're called human beings. So if God loves me for just being, I should find it within myself to love myself for just for who I am. And that's so challenging. That's to ferret, but to ferret, finding compassion for myself for just being who I am. So next time we have to remind ourselves that we're human beings. So now how do I do that? How do I find compassion for just being? And that leads us to chapter 103, having compassion for Hashem. Isn't that weird? Compassion for Hashem, for God. But that's what King David is teaching us in chapter 103. The way he starts is the way he ends. He says so beautifully in the very beginning, Barchi nafshi at Hashem. He starts off in the first verse that we should bless God. And in the last verse, 22, he says it, Barchi nafshi et Hashem. So he starts and ends that our job is to learn to bless our soul, our every being, our every essence is to bless God, to find what is compassionate. What does God do for us that is so compassionate? Now, one of the reasons why it's so important to do that, I don't know if you've ever heard this methodology. Now, we one of the steps I spoke about is finding compassion for someone that we don't like. One of the ways, the tools to do that sometimes is to try to make a list of that individual. There has to be something good about them, right? You know, that famous concept that even a watch that's broken is correct twice a day, even when it's broken. So obviously for human beings, there has to be something good about a person. So it's a matter of learning to find it and focusing on that. And that's what this chapter is doing. This chapter is trying to bring out all the greatness that God does for us and learn to bless it. Because if we learn to bless and, and see the compassion, then we'll know that we can have compassion for ourselves. It's so important. And so I want to highlight two specific psukim, two specific verses that really help us understand the compassion that God has for us and help develop the compassion that we could then have 
for God and for those around us. Very, very important. How do I do that? We look at verse nine, Pasuk Tet, and I'm going to read it to you in Hebrew and then in English. And then I'm going to talk about one of my most famous, favorite commentaries. Okay, so it says like this, Lo yariv velo le'olam yitor. He will not quarrel to eternity and he will not bear a grudge forever. So one of my most favorite commentators is the Malbim. Now the Malbim is a par excellence when it comes to the language. Also Rav Hirsch, if you've heard of Rav Hirsch, she's also focused on the language. And what they do is these commentators, they take the words and they try to demonstrate to us, yeah, the words sound so familiar. It's not just a matter of repeating the same word for emphasis, but rather each word has its own meaning. So when you go back to this phrase, lo le netzach yariv, lo le olam yitor, you have the word netzach and olam. Netzach, we translate as eternity. Olam, we translate as forever, like, hello, <laughs> don't they mean the same thing? Forever, eternity, we use it so, so loosely that we don't even understand that there is a really fine line difference between the two, and the Malbim demonstrates and teaches it to us. He says, when we use the word netzach, eternity, we're referring to the nefesh. When we use the term olam, forever, we're referring to the goof. Now, what's the difference between the nefesh and the goof? When I use the term eternity for the nefesh, it's not just this world. It is also in reference to the world to come, olam haba. But when I use the world, the word olam, like forever, the, the body, it's only this, it's limited. It's only this world. Um, let's say biblically, if I use the term evid nirza, a slave that doesn't want to ever leave its master, and we say he could become what's called an evid nirza, he can be a slave forever. So Evid la Olam, Rashi on the spot says, Evid la Olam, no, it means only until Yovel. Olam, when I use that terminology, there's an end in sight. There's an end in this world, in the Olam Hazem, the goof, it ends. But Netzach is forever. So what is this verse telling me? Lo le Netzach Yariv, that God is not going to punish us in olam haba, but rather only in this world. This is a chesed. This is a true chesed, that our punishments are here and now. So in order that the chesed, that he wouldn't punish us later, you get your punishment now, what you might deserve, because later on in the world of Netzach, in the world that is forever and ever and eternity, it is so much more painful. And it's a kindness. So here was my friend, Nancy, who was saying these words day in and day out. And I'm, I'm picturing and imagining her sitting in front of me and, and saying this parak of Tehillim. And she was praying to God with the sickness that she had. And she was saying, God, I know you're giving this to me, but I know it's for my good because this is a kindness you're doing for me now so that I will not get punished later on, and then I could have all the rewards and get all the kindness from you later on. And it was so very true. If I could share something so powerful, I, I don't want to give anybody the heebie-jeebies, <laughs> but this is a very uh, powerful story that I'm going to share. When she did pass away, my friend Nancy, I was amongst what we call the Hever Kadisha. I was amongst uh, my friends who got her body ready for burial. I had done it before. I have done that mitzvah before. If, if you have never experienced that mitzvah, I, I implore you to do that at least once in your life to experience that type of mitzvah. At first, when I started doing it, I was scared. I would just say the prayers. You could be the person on the side just saying the prayers. You don't necessarily have to touch the body. And so when it came to my friend Nancy, I, I told all my friends the night before, I said, I'll do the prayers. I don't know if I'll be actually be able to handle touching her body. And so there I was on the side as my friends were cleaning my best friend's body, getting her ready. I began to say the prayers and I was crying. I was bawling as I am about <laughs> getting emotional right now when I'm reliving it. And I remember 
I felt something. You know, we believe that when you clean the body, the neshama is in the room. That's why you're not allowed to talk. If anyone doesn't know this, if you never experienced it, you're not allowed to talk. And when you do talk only in reference to what you're doing, it's in a whisper because we don't want to scare the neshama, startle them. And so all of a sudden I felt something. I felt something like all around me. And all of a sudden I truly felt and heard my best friend's voice. And she was saying, Jordana, why are you crying? Why are you crying? And I was like, what? I'm like looking around as if it's like in the movies. Do my friends hear this? Do they hear Nancy? I, I hear Nancy. And, and she says to me, Jordana, do you not see me? I'm dancing in circles around you right now. And what you don't know is that Nancy, the last few years of her life, she was in a wheelchair and she couldn't move that much. It was very hard for her to walk. And she says, Jordana, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. I'm so happy, I'm dancing right here. And I guess that's what I was feeling. I was feeling this energy all around me and I started to laugh. I couldn't believe it. My friend is telling me she's so happy. And this is what I imagine when she was alive, she had such vibrance. She had such energy and I can imagine her saying this parak of Tilim and saying to Akash Baruch Hu, thank you. Thank you for giving me this now. And she appreciated that when she got to that world of Olam Shal Emet, that Netzach, she was dancing. She was truly dancing. And now I want to go to the next verse that I want to focus on. And that is the 13th verse, the, first, the 13th Pasuk. That Hashem, we're saying, as a father has mercy on his sons, the Lord had mercy on those who fear him. We're talking about here, if you want to know about compassion, compassion comes from a father and son relationship, a mother and son relationship. It's focused here in this parak that type of relationship that we have with God. It's not talking about the king and the servant because a father and a son relationship represents true compassion. A mother and a son, true compassion. You know, uh, oh, someone's saying they remember Nancy. Thank you, yes. Um, a womb is called a rechem. That's the organ, is called a rechem because that's where a mother develops her compassion, her pity, for the child, it all develops there. When, if you're fortunate to have children, you know that when you're pregnant and all of a sudden you get sick, you can't take whatever medicine you want that you're accustomed to taking. You have a cold, you just can't take cold medicine. And that's when you're like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm really sacrificing for this child already. I could just so easily have some sort of relief, but you can't. And you have to like suffer the cold. <laughs> like maybe you're not accustomed to. And that's what we're really talking about here, that the relationship that God has with us is like a father and a son. And we have to understand what is it to have this true compassion? What is compassion? How do you get compassion? It's by developing a connection with God. It's developing a relationship with God. I, I, the best story I have to demonstrate this is that when I talk about this famous story and people love this story, so that's why I try to repeat it as often as possible. People really connect to this. It's when I had my first aha moment of what it means to have a relationship with God. I was about 18, I think, at the time. I happen to have two brothers. They're both older than I am, but I call one my older and one my younger, just in reference so that it makes life easier. Now, my older brother, he was my hero. He was the oldest of the family, and anything he did was awesome and amazing. He could do no wrong, no matter what he did to me. If he pulled my hair, it was okay. But my younger brother, oh my gosh, we did not get along. He would tease me. He would bother me. He would pick on me. And we so didn't get along. And I remember one day I was in the kitchen and my brother put his hands on my shoulder. And I thought it was my younger brother trying to give me a massage. And I was quite agitated. I was so annoyed. Uh, the blood was boiling inside me. <laughs> Why is my brother touching me? I can't stand him. He bothers me all the time. And all of a sudden, I remember like, like in a movie, so dramatic. I turn around, turn my head, and lo and behold, I see it's my older brother. And I'm telling you, the wave of anger just washed right over me. And I was like, 
I was about to turn around and say, stop touching me. And all of a sudden I see it's my older brother. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> it was the same feeling. It was the same emotion of the massage. But since I had a different relationship with that brother, it became okay. Whatever he was doing was not agitating, annoying me anymore. It was the same action, but because of the relationship that I had with the person that was doing it, it didn't bother me. That's when I had my aha moment. That if, when you have a relationship with somebody and you have an understanding, then somehow or other, what they do seems all right. I'm sure you've all experienced that that somebody could do something to you and that, uh, that same action gets done to you by someone else and it could be so agitating and annoying. So to learn to have true compassion, David HaMelch is teaching us, read this parak of Tehillim, make that list. Like I had said, you know, when you have somebody that perhaps it's challenging for you to have compassion for them, to find something good about them. This is what this parak of Tehillim is all about saying, develop your connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Make a stronger connection by looking at this parak of Tehillim. You are listing all the things that you want to praise God for. The way he starts it off is the way he ends. Hashem. You should bless God. All the innards, all everything that's inside you. You should be blessing God. Pick something, find something that is bless worthy that you see God in, and he ends the same way. So what he's telling you is, let's break it down. It's easy for me to find something amazing about someone I have a great connection with, right? My older brother, that's easy for me to do. But my younger brother, well, now it's easy for me to do it. I get along with him now. But, but back then, my younger brother, I would to have made that list. And even more so, myself. How often, what do we do? We jump to see something negative about ourselves. We jump to criticize ourselves. We jump to say we did something wrong constantly. But why don't we make lists that are great about ourselves? Why don't we make lists and say how wonderful we are, teferit, shepit, teferit, find the compassion. How do we find true compassion? Make that list about others. Make that list about yourselves. And then most importantly, when you say this parak 103, you're making a list about God, thanking him for all the wonderful things he's done. Make that connection, make that a fatherly connection. See that what he's doing for you is so awesome that he, if you feel you're being punished in some way, shape or form, understand that this is Olam and not Lenetzach. So I hope you all get to do that with me. And when you read this parak of Tehillim in the future, you Remember my friend, Nancy, who would say this every day, day in and day out, and how in the Olam Shal Netzach, she gets to dance. Thank you. Wow. Uh, I'm speechless. I love that story. And uh, I would love if you can, if you can uh, tell us and also then type it here. So I'll, we're going to keep it all in mind. Nancy's Hebrew name. When we say to Yilin tonight, we're going to say Lilui Nishmata. Okay. Keep her in mind. It was a very, very, very powerful story. You know, yeah. I was looking at uh, the Perek right? and it, it, it says, right? People say this when they're sick. People say this and, you know, talking about the concept of, of compassion, you know, oftentimes maybe we have like a practical thing that we can all do over this next 24 hours, right? When we come into contact with somebody, just like you said, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's somebody that we don't necessarily get along with. Our knee-jerk reaction sometimes, like you said, right? It forces us to potentially be unkind or not to have that compassion, not to stop at that bus stop to take them to the ride, right? We, this knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, I don't like them. That, in a sense, the lack of compassion is like a machala, right. is like a sickness. There, sometimes I think the reason that that happens, perhaps, is because we need to heal something within ourselves. When we feel so negatively to somebody, Perhaps there's something within that person that's shining a light on something in ourselves that we don't so much like. And so because we don't so much like it, we, we don't want it. We're canceling that person out. We're canceling out something that's actually within us. So 
perhaps it, it can be very, very much connected, right? Healing, this concept of, you know, we're actually healing when we're saying this, we're healing our, our vision, our ability to see that there is good in somebody because we have to first heal our vision of ourselves. If you truly embrace yourself and you truly love yourself, every aspect of yourself, and you have compassion with yourself, you'll be able to have compassion so much easier with, other, with others because when somebody acts in a way that may be upsetting or maybe putting off to stop for just a few seconds, just a few seconds and say, wait, what could they be going through? Did I ever act in that way? Because the, the likelihood is we've acted in the same way that they might be acting. What could they be going through? The, the concept of empathy, compassion, empathy, they're all very much connected. So remember that the lack of compassion in a sense can also be a, a mahala. And, mm -hmm. and, and saying this has the ability to also to heal us from the inside out. And so I want to thank you because sharing what you're sharing, I, that sort of came to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anybody, but I, it sort of makes sense in my brain. So I want to just share that thought. And perhaps over this next 24 hours, something practical that we can take from what Jordana shared so beautifully, and, and, and hopefully also in the Lilui Nishma of Nancy, your friend that you shared so beautifully, please tell us her name. Uh, it, well, I know it's Noah Batshila, but I know her father's Hebrew name. I think it's, I'm going to look it up on my phone. Noah, Noah Batshila, Hashem knows who we're talking about also. Yeah. Hashem, you know what we're talking about? Fantastic. He does. He knows who we're talking about. So we're going to keep her in mind. Bezrat Hashem, over these next 24 hours, something is going to come up. I don't know what, okay? Something is going to come up where you need to have a little bit, an extra ounce of compassion. And over these next 24 hours, just take those few seconds instead of having the knee-jerk reaction. Think, okay, this is a machala that I have to heal inside of me so that I don't take this anger or aggression or, or this lack of compassion or this lack of empathy out on this person. See what happens. Maybe the first time you have an, an incident over these next 24 hours, you're going to forget. And then right when it's over, you're going to be like, oh man, I orally told me that was going to happen. What did I do? I totally... Another uh, another opportunity will come. Uh, okay, I, I don't know. We're going to oh, test yeah. this out. You can message me, tell me about what happens. I'm going to keep my eyes open. Uh, and, and, and Bezrat Hashem, by us taking those few extra seconds, we're going to be able to heal something, heal the machala within us. And by doing so, heal the machala within that person as well. Uh, so can I, I say I, something? I, really? Yeah, please. Wanna, well, two things that I thought of when you were talking is that, first of all, healing, this is the month. Yeah, right? That's what we say. It yeah. represents the month of healing, right? Um, but also, again, I'm no Rav and I'm not a Mukubal, for sure not. But a lot of times um, for you, I'm sure it's more, it's home a lot more, everything that's going on in Eretz Yisrael. Um, and the, you know, oh, the whole chain of terrorist attacks that were going on, what gets spoken about is if you look at the terrorist attacks of recent, it's brothers, brothers, sisters, then there was a brother and a sister that passed away, even though it wasn't a terrorist attack, siblings. Now this can't be coincidence, right? So one of the things that I've, I've analyzed and try to think about is that these are messages, obviously, I don't want those messages, but there's a message of compassion that Hakaj Baruch is trying to tell us we're family. Remember that you're brothers and you're sisters with each other. And I think um, as a parent for myself, one of the most painful things is when I see if my children don't get along. When they don't get along, it hurts me to my core. I'm sure that's with all parents. And Hakaj Baruch is our parent, he's our father. And when he sees that we don't get along, it is so, painful. And perhaps this is a way for him to teach us the message of learning to have compassion, to realize we are all family, brothers and sisters, and we are all in this together. So this is the month of healing that perhaps this is what we're supposed to be healing this month. We're supposed to be healing and focusing on our compassion tremendously. I hope that's okay. Wow. Uh, it's very true. I, I, I really appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, talking about compassion for Hashem, you know, I, I think I shared this once before, but it, it fits exactly what you just said. And we say it on Shabbat, okay? It's in the Perek and Tehillim. Gam ki elech mavet lo yiradak yatay madi. Right? So the, the, the general idea is, okay, when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear because Hashem, you're with me. That when I'm in trouble, Hashem, you're with me. Through a crazy story of what happened to me, I'm not going to go into it now. I know we don't have the time. But 
it, I, it flipped for me. And now when I say it, whenever I say it, I think of it that way. It flipped for me in terms of Hashem. It's, I feel it as though as I'm talking to Hashem, not that Hashem needs, needs, needs me, but it's Hashem I know. You know, even though when it feels like, because you're looking at Am Yisrael and you're looking at the hardships, you're looking at the pain that we're sometimes causing each other. Even then when you feel, when you're looking down at us and it hurts so much, because don't, I'm, I'm there with you. And there's other people. We're all there with you, Hashem. We're all there with you. And, and we're going we're gonna to we're gonna become better. We want to become better. Those five extra seconds that we take before that knee-jerk reaction, you know what that does to Hashem? Right. Like, wow. Five exactly. seconds. That's like us telling Hashem, I'm, 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 I'm with you, Hashem. I'm with you. I know it's hard. I'm with you. And Bezrat uh, Hashem, through these actions, we have the ability to truly usher in uh, the time of the Geulah, what we're all hoping and searching and waiting so patiently, but anxiously, and maybe not so patiently. It's enough with the patience. We're ready to get it. Uh, and Bezrat Hashem, we should bring it into our lives. So I, I want to thank you again, Jordana. Please tell me your friend Nancy's name again in Hebrew. In Hebrew is Noah Bat Sheila, but I'm going to look it up and try to put it in the chat while you do the Tilim now, right? Fantastic. Fantastic. Noah Bat Sheila. Yes, I know. For, for Sefaradim, it, they stay with the mother's uh, name. Ashkenazim, they switch it to the father's name. Yes. Some of you sometimes have asked me that. Don't go anywhere. We're going to do our Tihilim read now. Um, we're going to keep uh, Nancy in our mind and anybody that we're praying for in our mind. We obviously know we're coming up upon, for those of you that are not in Israel, may not be following along, even though we're not in Israel, we're still all connected. It's going to be Yom HaZikaron in just another another day. Uh, so we can keep all of Am Yisrael in our hearts and our minds for healing. Healing, physical healing, but also the emotional healing that we need to heal in order for us to improve the relationships we have with one another. So here we go. We're going to do our Tehillim read now. Grab your phone. If you don't have a phone, grab your Tehillim book. If you don't have a book, just open your heart. It's there right inside of you. Speak to Hashem. Tell Him how much you love Him during these six minutes. And let's shake the Shamayim right now with that Tefillot. On behalf of Abraham's legacy, we are excited to lead you in a Tehillim reading where each and every one of us from wherever we are in the world can easily join in and complete a book of Tehillim in unison within minutes through a very special app called Abraham's Legacy, Tehillim Together, in memory of Avraham ben Polin. To be part of the global Tehillim read happening now, download Abraham's Legacy on your mobile device from the App Store, available for iOS and Android. You can also scan this QR code with your phone. To scan a QR code, simply open the camera on your phone and hold it up to this image. A link will appear on top, which you can click and it will direct you to download the app. I'll give you all a moment to download the app. Sign in, and in a minute, we will all click on the Start Reading button on the main screen, and each of us will receive a different peric from the Sefer of Tehillim so that we can complete the book and add to the global count. In the top right corner, you can click the icon to switch your language if you like. You'll also be able to see in real time the amount of people reading and countries reading. Don't forget, you'll need to confirm that you've completed the chapter. Let's put a few minutes on the clock to read in unison so that we can unleash the power of our combined tefillah. Tiskul mitzvot. Thank you. 
יש אוצר שמציק לצאן, ואין ציר שיצעק לצאן. רק אני מול ים שלם ולב שבור. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, 
לרכך בי הכל, ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, לשכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב, ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול. And you can go ahead and you can finish the parak that you're on. You should know that uh, we, we finished one book. We started, it was already towards the end of one book. And we're already on uh, close to, uh, we're in the 90s right now in reading a second book. We had about 15 people on from four countries, which is beautiful. We want even more and more people. So I want to encourage all of you. to share the app with others. You don't only need to use this app when you're on the program. You could use this at any time. If you come onto the app once a day, just once a day, and you click to read one parak, you should know that you are part of finishing a book every single day because we read more than one book every day. We read tens of books every day. That's a crazy thing, spending 30 seconds and having this hood. If you go on every day, almost because obviously Shabbat, not on Shabbat, obviously, But oh, around 360, you know, it's 300 times you're finishing the book in a year. That's really incredible. So I want to encourage all of you to utilize the app, to share it with others. It's a free app. It's in Hebrew, English, Spanish, French. Bezrat Hashem, we're going to continue to add more and more features. And that's where uh, being part of this raffle comes into play. If you take part in the Abraham's Legacy raffle that we have and joining it, you just have to give a minimum donation of, of $18. Or of course you could dedicate a chapter for the week, for the month, but you're in it irregardless. Not only will you, will you win an amazing Sepharim, the Netila cup, a tour, but you'll also have a chapter that's going to be dedicated to you, whoever you want to put it for, over the course of the entire year. That's tremendous. That means that there are going to be hundreds, thousands of books read for your loved one. Right now we have 4.6 thousand books completed 784,000 chapters that's just in the global read that's not in the circles the circles makes that double that's over a million chapters read that's amazing and one of our top users one of our top members has read has already hit over the hundred thousand mark hundred thousand chapters of Tlim it's incredible if you ever have any questions about how to use the app maybe you're not technologically savvy you I have loads of videos on our YouTube channel and you can reach me directly. I will answer any question you send my way. I'm going to put you for over here, my, my WhatsApp number. You can also send me an email to info at abrahamslegacy.com. Uh, all the information also is in the emails that you get of how you can be a part of this raffle and help contribute to helping us, not only bringing more programming, but actually continuing to develop the app I just spoke, uh, we're Bezrat Hashem working on this right now. We're incorporating into the app short form videos between one and a half minutes to four minutes every single day. We're going to have an official parak of the day, sort of like a Tehillim Yomi, with a video that's going to go for every single day, short form, in the app. But we can only do this with combined effort. This is a team sport helping to bring the Gula. Just imagine, we were 15 people just now reading. Could you imagine, let's say you got together with your family and you want to do a nice activity. You can all sit down for five minutes and finish a book, potentially. But imagine if all of Am Yisrael takes part in this. Could you, I know I'm, I, you think I'm crazy. That is my goal. I created this for that purpose. I created this for that purpose. That when all of Am Yisrael is together, whether it be at the Kotel, you know, for whatever, whatever event it is or during Selichot, imagine everybody clicking and reading. We have a question, Batya. Oh, it's great to see you. Hi, how are you doing? Listen. I'm doing great. All, Jordana, you touched my heart to the core of my heart. I, I didn't show my picture because I was sitting there in tears, in tears going through everything you went through. And I'm still like totally blown away by you. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful. everything I just feel 
I felt like the Mashiach already came and I felt like we were dancing in the Beit HaMikdash with oh. you. And, and I just, I just am so, so emotional from you. It, it's so beautiful. I'm so touched with everything you said. Oh, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. I'm glad, I'm glad my heart touched your heart. I'm so oh glad. Where, where, where are you from? I'm in uh, Kidumim in Israel in the Shomron. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Well, hopefully one day we will dance together. That's what I hope. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. That's for certain. But yeah, it's always fantastic to see you and your smiling face. I love it. I'm Thanks all touched. Sharing. I'm all touched. Um, Orly, you, you and Nomi, the, the way you did it, I'm telling you, you're so amazing. And I'm supposed to, God willing, um, you know, teach, I think next week um, I'm on, I guess, I think I, I'm, I'm not going to overstep my thing, but I think I'm going to do a pretty good job. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to beat you, uh, Jordana, you were like amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you oh, something. Wait, about you. When you speak from the heart, it reaches people's heart and you, my friend, are all heart. So I am not worried. Thank you so much, Jordana, for being here. Really, you've touched so many people as you see. Uh, and so we should never take, uh, you know, our words and the things that we put into the world for granted. Every one of us on here has something to give and to contribute to touch the lives of others. So continue to step into your, uh, you know, into your truth and give back from the gifts that Hashem has provided to you. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm excited to see you all again. We are going to be having, remember, we're not here tomorrow. So tomorrow's Monday and Tuesday. We're not here, but we're back again on Wednesday with Rebbe and Miriam Yerushalmi who's going to be focusing on our last chapter of Tehillim, chapter 150, talking about feeling the beat of every rapturous moment. Remember, tefillah, it changes us. And when we change, our whole world changes. Love you all very, very much. <laughs>